G'day folks. Well, I was recently uh, rummaging around the scrap metal yard and picked this old vice off a uh, big, very heavy uh, horizontal mill. Uh, again, the whole thing had been left out in the weather and was pretty much ruined. But the vice itself survived and uh, even came with the rotating base, which is kind of nice. And uh, I'm going to try and fix it up because I have to return the Vertex 5 inch that I've currently got. Uh, this is a Sanders high-low speed vise made in England. I've freed up part of the screw. It's got this weird spring pre-tensioner in it. And uh, I've just soaked it with ATF and um, basically diesel fuel. Back to the gib screws off because this is a, a V dovetail type vise which is really nice. Um, the other, uh, my favourite one of these um, these vertexes, they have, they're an angle lock vise and they pull down when you tighten the screw. Uh, the crappy Chinese ones have square ways in them and once they wear, it doesn't stop the top from lifting up and kicking over and causing all kinds of issues with your uh, machine work. So they're the ones I avoid. These are really good. These are about $600, $700 out of um, Hare and Forbes Machinery House in Australia. Uh, made, made by Vertex in Taiwan. What? Hmm? Yeah, made by Vertex in Taiwan, and uh, that one is going to be a replacement because this one's only on loan while I finish this um, die head clamp. Uh, this is one of two, this is the second one. I'm just going to, once I've got that thing partially apart and st stewing in the electrolysis tank, I'll, um, I'll continue milling this, uh, milling this part out and get that done. Hmm? Yeah, too disruptive. Do I have to get your worst enemy out? <laughs> I've got a squeaky toy that freaks her right the hell out. But nah, this is a um, pretty solid old pommy made vice. I mean the slide does wiggle side to side and the screw's free but she ain't coming loose at the moment so I think I'll take these screws out and try and remove the whole screw assembly. It's sort of the, the next option. Likewise there's probably also access to the back down here if I take these cap screws out. These jaws are probably aren't original. I'd say they've been uh, manufactured recently. I'll uh, be stoning and honing and cleaning the whole lot up and just yeah, make my own custom jaws for it. Not hard. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's pretty straightforward. Let's take the um, take the bolts out and just unwind the screw. She's a bit crusty, but at least being shielded from the weather, it's not rusted. It's just full of schmoo. Yeah. <laughs> there we go, now she's moving. Oh, there's a stop there, though. Oh, I see. There's a nut. Oh, from the bottom. Of course, there's a screw. Cut. There's a big bolt coming up from the bottom too, holding that brass or bronze um, Acme thread nut in there. Hey, interrupting me. Yeah, she's all scored, but that's all right. For what I'm doing, it'll be fine. Yummy. There we go. It's a what, 516 key. It's actually a BSF, it's not even BSW. Uh, British Standard Whitworth is uh, fairly coarse. British Standard Fine is well, like that. That's BSF. Almost completely sure. Same with the, um, the bolts that hold the, uh, the main screw bushing, the bearing in. Now, whether or not this thing will drop down and pull out, I don't know. I might actually have to put that screw back in and give it a bit of a love tap with the nylon hammer. Not sure. It'll come apart though. That and back these all the way out, pull that gib strip out so I've got a little more travel. It's going to be very close tolerances. Oh, there's a serial number there. Or possibly maybe in a test, test calibration stamp. I don't know. Okay, I was right the first time. Take the uh, moving jaw face off and uh, it'll clear the uh, the nut. 
Huh, fossilized insect. Well, oil oilified insect. That thing would probably be quite combustible right now. It also looks like someone's replaced these with metric screws. <laughs> yeah, those aren't imperial. Well, maybe not. I don't know. But yeah, these just... I don't... They sound hardened. Not sure. I can make my own and harden them in the kiln. I can heat treat here. Very neat. And the threads look fairly good. I mean, they're still nice and chunky. They're not completely worn out. That's the main thing I was worried about is if that was stripped, but no, she's still got plenty of life left in her. She's got to clean, hone, and uh, lap the uh, mating surfaces, the sliding surfaces, and it's really pretty right. I like it. Not bad for what, a ten dollar vice. That's all I paid for it, ten bucks. Just got on the on the off chance that it was not, not fixable, you don't want to invest too much. Yeah, there we go. You know, this old girl hadn't been clean in a while. <laughs> there's your weekly dose of uh, greasy machine shop schmoo. Yeah. There's the Gibbs strip, which puts tension on the slide, takes all the slop out of it, a wiggle, wiggle wobble. Nice. Looks like there are some little studs in there that come out too. Oh yeah. Don't lose those. There aren't just grub screws, but there are also some little push pins that bear upon this. So you've got some slightly offset angled holes. That has to go back in the correct way, along with all of these little pins, one, two, and three. So I'm going to make absolutely sure that they end up with all the fasteners and other things in a basically a Ziploc baggie. Ziploc baggie with a bit of uh, auto trans fluid or something in it. Yeah, it's just a bit rough and scored up, but that's not too bad. I've seen worse. Hmm, it's not terrible. Anyway, I'll get to cleaning this up and uh, update it as I go along. All right, that looks really good. All that flaky stuff will come out anyway. Yep. For non-contact rust removal, this thing is fantastic. It's drying out very quickly because it's, um, so hot but once I get it under the tap and cool it down, enough once I get under the tap and cool it down it'll um it'll scrub up nicely with some scotch bright that's all I really use is scotch bright and a, a stiff brush or something like that to get into all the details because you guys you still gotta remove the black oxide that stuff all right that looks really good the paint comes off the rust gets broken down into black iron oxide and with a bit of a rub and some scotch bright, it all comes off. Absolutely brilliant. Non-contact non rust and paint removal. Yep. I might paint just a bit of the base. I mean, really, coolant gets under it and starts lifting it anyway. So I think it'll be a brush job. And the top slide, I think I'll just stone it, bake it in the oven. Uh, they're all going to get baked in the oven just to drive off any moisture. But I'll bake it and just slather it with oil while it's hot. So that's what the top looks like when it's come out um, or after the scotch bright, scotch bright and fresh water. It does oxidize very quickly. That's the only problem, it's raw iron. But a tiny bit of what, what oxide's gonna build up on this is easily rubbed off afterwards. So I'm gonna let that one cool down and wash it and I'm going to preserve this one and uh, it'll be good. I'll be able to stone all these nicks and things out of it. I'll hone it. I'll lap it. Yeah, it's cleaned up all right. The rust, pit, rust looked really bad, but really, there's very superficial pitting. That's good. Very good. There we go. The base cleaned up nicely. Again, it's all going to get a lap, lapping stone run over it, but... Uh, 
the only thing I'll just paint these surfaces here by hand and uh, yeah basically any, anything that's cast and not machined. Raw, raw casting will get painted, anything that's machined stays raw. Isn't that right puppy? Bottom's nice and clean. There's patent number there. Yeah, very good. Not much I can do about that apart from maybe f make a plug and fill it and lap it back but really, nah, not much point. It is what it is. Got a few idiot marks on the sides there. That's just from running tools into it. And that's the uh, zero point for the uh, swivel base which also has to be done. Yeah, not bad. Alright, so after a bit of a uh, a bit of a lag in uh, work on this vice, I really need to get it done, so I'm going to strip this apart and just see uh, what condition it's on, in on the inside. I have soaked it in oil and it's nice and smooth now, but uh, I'm going to pull it apart anyway and probably polish this in the lathe just to get rid of some of the sharp spots and just minimise chewing this brass nut out. Again, for a vice I paid, what, five or ten dollars for, it's not the end of the world, but uh, I'd like it to last. Yeah, everything else is cleaned up alright. I've taken a honing stone to uh, all these surfaces, just a piece like that. It needs a good clean, but uh, yeah, I just gently uh, honed it with some, uh, just use some just rubbish um, spray spray oil kind of stuff. I just use the cheapest stuff that's lying around. And it's taken high spots off, dings, dents, that sort of thing. It's come up pretty good. Good enough. Uh, I realise I still have to de-rust the jaws, but that's about it. So I'll get this apart. Uh, what is it? There's a big circlip in there, so if I take that out, should be right, maybe. Don't know how this fully comes apart. There's a big coil spring in there too, for some reason. Don't know. Either way, I want to paint this. The bearings and everything have come good, but uh, yeah, I definitely want to paint this um, this iron housing and clean that brass plate up. Okay, so that came apart a bit differently to what I thought. I've taken the circlip off and pushed this out, and it's just, uh, well, once I get it cleaned up, I'll see if it's in multiple pieces or if this is just one brass bush retained by this spring. Because, uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of... I don't know why. I've never used a vice before with a... Um, I guess it's like a preload spring or something. It doesn't make any sense. All the vices I've used are like angle lock, um, like Kurt-style vices that don't have this little apparatus on them. Whatever it does, it's there for a reason. I'm going to clean this right up and see how many pieces it's in and how I can take it apart and clean it properly because I want to polish this screw up and just take all the rust off and obviously um, take some of the burrs and that sort of thing off just to minimise uh, any further damage to uh, that brass nut. But yeah, my soaking in uh, kerosene and uh, or what was it? Um, no, it was auto trans fluid and acetone. Uh, that's really freed it up quite nicely, actually. Yeah. Straight cast iron housing. I'll give that a... I don't think I'll bother with electrolysis. I'll just wire wheel that and then uh, wash it down with some uh, priming fluid. Just acetone and methyl ethyl ketone. Yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Okay. Well, that finally came apart. I uh, disengaged the spring give it a whack with my big pink rod a few times and uh, she came out. Not bad, but I don't know what it's supposed to do. I'm guessing it's some kind of preload. But uh, what purpose it serves, I don't really know. It's uh, a mystery. Maybe someone can chime in. What does this spring a thing do on the vice? Because the other vices I've used never use them. They just have a standard nut in the base and a uh, a um, thrust bearing. There's no ball bearings or roller thrust bearings or anything in this thing. It's just bronze brass bush and br bronze bush on the um, on the base. So yeah, I'm going to clean the crap out of this thing because there's a lot of it and uh, re-grease it and put it back together again. Because there is a yeah, there is a grease nipple on the housing, so I can just pump grease into it afterwards. Not bad. Apart from the pitting on the screw. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. 
I think this vice will see some more use. At least until I can afford a, um, a decent Vertex um, Kurt, basically a Taiwanese Kurt clone. Uh, there's nothing wrong with those vices for home use. No need to go spending two two thousand bucks on a Kurt when you can spend six hundred on a vice that's perfectly adequate for home and even small industry use. Anyway, back to it. Yeah, the screw's cleaning up reasonably well. Just taking the sharp edges off so it doesn't chew that brass nut out too bad. Um, it's a little bit bent. <laughs> it's got a bit of a wobble to it, but it's fine. Again, this probably even machined in multiple stages on different machines, and maybe it wasn't made right to start with. Doesn't matter. But yeah, essentially I'm just taking some kerosene and uh, 3M wet or dry. I think it's 1200 grit wet or dry, and just yeah, I'll show you what I do. It's the easiest way to do this. Just run it down the flights. This is a little bit risky, but you just got to be smart about how you use the machine. about it. Hmm? Yeah, that'll do. Ready to put back, back into service after a good uh, clean and degrease. Yeah. If, when polishing things on a lathe you've got to be smart about it. Don't wrap things around yourself. Don't ever use like a rag to sort of polish it because uh, it'll wrap around and take your fingers and everything with you. Um, yeah, you get to be a little bit smart, but uh, once you know your machine, you sort of know its limitations and dangers and that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think this one's running off a uh, variable frequency drive uh, system. But even that, yeah, you can't stop it. <laughs> Okay, well there's the uh, main nut assembly, and uh, some little pieces did fall out of it. Stop interrupting! <laughs> mm, piece of thread fell out of it, but it's right at the very front, and it doesn't really make sense, because you can't wind it back that far. <laughs> but yeah, I'm guessing maybe this thread is stretched and just popped that piece out. It, that leading, that little lead-in bit there. Either way, the rest of it's intact. 
So yeah, that's going to get locked down. That spring has to be spring a thing back in and well, everything has to be lubed up nicely and then it can go back in, of course, with the uh, the main bushing which has also been uh, cleaned up and painted. So uh, yeah, it's pretty dang good. It's been uh, nicely epoxy enameled. It's been sitting and curing for a good good amount of time. It's uh, it's not well, it's not quite fully cured, but it's cured enough I can put it back together. Didn't quite sand all the rust out of that, but that'll be all right. Yeah. Not a bad design. I don't get the point of this spring. Maybe someone can fill me in on that, but uh, either way, let's get it back together and uh, well, I'll move on to cleaning the actual jaw inserts up. I'm probably going to make some new ones anyway, but uh, I'll see what the old ones are like. Alright, well, after wire wheeling the uh, very badly worn jaws and putting it all back together again, this thing's pretty much serviceable. Uh, it's almost as big as the table of the mill itself, but uh, eh, it will do the job. I just got to uh, adjust the gib screws to take the slop out of it and uh, put a new grease nipple on it. I have pre-greased everything putting it back together again, so it's safe to use for a while. Um, yeah, I think it's the paint sort of peeled off the, uh, the logo in the center there, so uh, no, it's not really important. Main thing is the base is painted, painted and clean, and she's uh, actually in pretty good, pretty good order for such an old vice. I'm guessing it's 1950s or 60s era. Yeah, so I'm gonna position about right in the middle of the table, bolt it down, and uh, see how we go. I've only got limited travel on this milling machine, so I'm thinking. You have to align with the uh, T slot there, which sort of wants to fall off, but uh, either way, I think that's going to be the way to do it, and uh, I'll get just enough travel to do what I want to do. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I don't know what this, this thing is for. Why is that there? Maybe someone can enlighten me. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's uh, cleaning up and uh, restoring a rather old but still useful milling vice. It's definitely a lot better than uh, what I was using before.